Okay, so with that being said, uh, give me the scripture that I want uh, concerning when you come into the house of the Most High. But I, um, give me First Corinthians 14 and 40. Uh, bring it out. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High. Now what does it mean to keep your foot? It means steady yourself. Steady yourself. Keep your feet about you. Keep your... Uh, you know, have your wherewithal, have your wits about you when you come into the Most High, and be open to receive. You know, even after all these years, and the elder will tell you that, the captain will tell you that, and anybody that's been in this and operates in the spirit of humility, we're still learning. We're still learning. Uh, we're not up here to uh, hide behind titles or masks, but we want to acknowledge, so like acknowledge the Heavenly Father's order. So it's all about order. There's nothing that we have ascertained or attained in this life that didn't take some level of discipline. Huh? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely it's going to take some discipline. You know, uh, we know for the sisters, uh, for those of them that have been through uh, childbirth, we, man, you got it takes discipline to, to even be able to, you know, carry that child. And then when uh, the process in which you have to go through, even with your body, and then even how you have to get yourself mentally ready and prepared for what's to come. That's how we should be with the word. We should be with that and, you know, understand and have a relationship so when, and be prepared so when the word gives um, its life, so to speak, when life comes from the word, that you're prepared to deal with it. A lot of us are not uh, prepared to deal with it. We, under, we have a relationship on a small level, but how many women, you know, had that child and then end up giving the child up for adoption? or not able to nurture that child correctly. You know, you have a responsibility to nurture what the Most High has given you to birth. Does that make sense? All right, come on, read what you got. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High, and be more ready to hear. More ready to what? Ready to hear. You know, again, the spirit of know-it-all, I thank the Most High that we don't have it in this school. We don't, we don't deal with that. There's no spirit of know it all. All of us are learning. Like I said, myself included, and we're learning together. This is a journey together. All right? All praises. Come on. Be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. So we're even, who are we ready to hear from? We're the most high. That's why we come. This is why we give him praise. This is why we acknowledge him. This is why we barack him and bend our knee before him. That's what the word barak in the Hebrew means, to bend the knee, it means to bless him, to acknowledge him so that you may receive. You should never have your arms closed before the Heavenly Father. Your position should never be that, you know, I, I know everything. You know, whenever you see somebody, you know, we study body language. When anybody's doing like this, <laughs> right here, that's, that's, I know, I know something. Or I'm uncomfortable with something, I'm uncomfortable with learning, but you never see any real students like this. That's why you come here, you should have a pen and a paper. And we know that now. We know that we're here to, to learn, you know. So all for even captain still takes notes. Elder still takes notes. I still take notes. You know, we still are looking to learn because the most high can move upon this word like he did the face of the earth and manifestation is still taking place. He breathed on the on nothing, and look what happened. All right, so read. For they consider not that they do evil. So we gotta, again, in other words, just have the mind of a student. Read on. Be not rash with thy mouth. So don't be quick, and we know this, but this is the discipline we have. This is the discipline that we're to show others. Don't be rash with what you say. Come on. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before the Most High. So, you know, again, just watch as well as pray. We really should be watching more than we are speaking. We really should be watching more than we are speaking. You know, how much, how many of us hear from the Most High every day? I'm talking about audibly. We don't hear him. How many of us, when we're in the room, we hear the Most High? I'm talking about audibly. We don't. But he's speaking. He's speaking all the time. But we have to watch to hear from him. You know, it's almost like you hear with your ears. Because this is the word of the Heavenly Father. You see what I'm saying? So when we read it and when we speak his words, who's speaking? That's the most high speaking. That's the most high speaking. 
all praises. Come on. For the Most High is in heaven, and thou art upon the earth. Upon the earth. Remember what he says? My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your. We have his ways, and we have his thoughts right here. All we got to do is just do it. All right. Go ahead. 1 uh, uh, Corinthians 4 and 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. What things? All things. All things. There's an order that the Most High has. There's an order that he has with his men. There's an order that he has with his women. And we're not all the same in terms of the order. There's an order that he has. But we're all equally important in the eyes of the Most High. But there's still an order. And for that harmonious relationship to take place within his kingdom, we have to submit ourselves to that order. Read again from the top. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. So all things have to be done decently and in order. So with that, again, shout along to everybody. Uh, very excited about today. Uh, I'm just going to give a brief overview of this particular day. I'm not going to read all the chapters. If you want to find out about the time of Purim, then you would need to go to the book of Esther and just read from chapter 1, I believe it's all the way to verse what, nine, uh, chapter 9? Oh, yeah, chapter 9. So you will read the book of Esther 1 through 9, chapter 1 through 9. But I'm just going to go, uh, for time's sake, we're going to just, I'm going to give you an overview, and then we're going to get into Esther chapter 9. So let me just kind of give you a little background of the time. You got to, okay, all praise. So this celebration is recorded, obviously, in the book of Esther. Esther, uh, again, we're going to go to Esther chapter 9. Now, following the release from bondage uh, of the Babylonian captivity, we were in Babylon. And we were, that was the captivity that our people were in, the Israelites were in the Babylonian captivity. Uh, many Jews returned home to Jerusalem and the surrounding territory. So around Babylon, you had uh, different areas. I believe Persia was uh, one of the areas yeah. as well. Per Persia was one of the areas. So we, we moved after that captivity, we started moving into the interior of that region. All right, and the outskirts. Now, other Israelites chose to stay in the east, settling in the various lands of what they, the so-called Middle East. Now, this was around 576 B.C. that this happened before Hamashiach Yehoshua. All right, I know some of y'all are familiar with the story, so just bear with me. Uh, Persia was the nation in control of the area. All right, so there was a king that ruled, the king um, of the Persians, that was actually ruling during that time, and his name was Asurus Exerxes. All right? Exerxes was king. Now, Haman was his right hand man. Uh, so, Haman, his chief advisor, which possibly descended from who knows? Esau. What particular tribe, though, of Esau? There you go. There you go. He was of the Amalekites. Now, Esau being the chief tribe of Esau, just like Israel had 12 tribes, Esau had 12 tribes. At the Amalek is really, that's the border of all wickedness. He, he's the chief tribe of all wickedness. Who is Amalek today? The so-called Jewish people. Where do they reside now today? Israel, the so-called Middle East. They're still in that region. All right, in our home. That's right. I like that's the best, yeah, the best way to put it. In our house. Uh, all praises. So, Hammond, the chief advisor, again, uh, descendant, uh, an Amalekite or uh, Amalek, and he bore a deep hatred. Now, we know that uh, Esau had a deep hatred for us, and so how this is very relative even today, because the so called Jewish man, he hates you. He uses you. He, he's in the music industry. You talk about the Jewish Mossad and all the atrocities uh, that they commit against black people, all so-called black people, all the while knowing who we are. They know who the real Jews are. And knowing that they have stolen our identity and know that they're residing in our land. You have many so-called Jews uh, come out and tell you that they know that we are the real Jews. But they just 
you know, it's supposed to be kept secret because then their lie will be found out and they would have to give up all the things that they have taken from us. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So this is what Esau, the so-called European, has done. Come on. Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood, but even blood shall pursue thee. So their perpetual hatred towards us still ongoing. Uh, contrary to popular belief, so-called Jewish man helped to fund the transatlantic slave trade. That's right. A lot of our people don't know that. Some of the, uh, the names uh, that were that was given to uh, the slaves or that of so-called Jewish people, uh, even the names of the ships. Uh, and they have all this. They have all the records, man. They have all this. And yeah, some of the Jewish people names were under that of what they call Latin names, uh, which is Lopez, last name being Lopez and stuff. A lot of people, our people think they identify with um, Lat when they call themselves Latino, but what they really identify themselves are with Spaniards. Spaniards, and they are actually European. All right, come on. Uh, okay, yeah, all praises. All right, so 576 BC. So Persia was the nation in control, and we know that uh, Ahasuerus Xerxes was king, Haman his chief advisor, and the Edomite uh, from the chief house of Satan, which is Amalek. So he had a deep hatred. Um, and he was waiting for an opportunity to annihilate our people. He was looking for to destroy the Jews from the Persian Empire. So those of us who went into the Persian Empire, he was looking to destroy them. All right, and he had the power to, to do it. Give me where we had no power, uh, no might on the land. So, you know, let's get that. And the Most High, again, this is prophesied that this would happen to us. So we need to know this history. You know, we need to know this history of, of, about our people. You know, talking about black history. All history is so-called black history. Right, right. You know, we did everything, you know. But they never talk about this book being our historical book, right, you know. Right. This is our history. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thy hand. So we were even coming out of, again, these different captivities. You had the Medo-Persian captivity. You had the Babylonian captivity. All these are factual occurrences that happened to our people, all right? So Haman was waiting for an opportunity to annihilate the Israelites, all right? So I'm gonna just give you something brief, retelling you know, the early parts of the Book of Esther. But when Vashti, now she was the queen of Xerxes, and she refused to attend a party given by her husband. And so what ended up taking place, he had her banned from Persia. It was like that during that time. You know, the reverence and the, those Eastern cultures, and they still maintain that today. They're not going to, you know, there's not going to be any order out of the family structure. If you're a wife, you're to be submissive to your husband, just like the scripture says. Well, I'll submit to your husband. Matter of fact, get that. As if he were Lord. The word Lord is master. In the Hebrew, we say Adawan, which is my Lord. But when you call someone my Lord, that means they had authority over you. And that's the relationship between husband and wife and even Hamashiach and the church or the community of the Israelites. You see what I'm saying? Just like Hamashiach is the head of us, and we, he, we see that word Lord, which is really Adawan, this is who we listen to. This is who we're supposed to respond to. If you don't, then you have to deal with the consequences of not listening to your master teacher or your leader or your head. Bring it up. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. That's why you got to think about it even when you're becoming a wife. I wonder if you are, you know, every woman is not a wife and every man ain't a husband. So are you ready to submit? If you're not ready to submit, you're not ready to be a wife. You know, if you're not ready to lead and love your wife as Hamashiach loved the church and gave his life for it, you ain't ready to be a husband. You may want to pause. 
<laughs> do some more studying and some biblical application. All right, come on. As unto their Lord. Ooh, as unto the what? Unto the Most High, their Lord. Unto their Lord, to their Maker, their Creator. But why submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Most, as if he's the Most High? A lot of you got a lot of female apotheosis going on in in America, man. They worship women is backwards. You got men submitting, submitting to women. It's not wrong with taking care of your woman, but when you're talking about, I'll do whatever you do. I'll dry your clothes. I'll cook your dinner too. I mean, it's nothing wrong with doing that, but I mean, man, come on, you can't be wearing the apron all day long. You, know, you gotta go to work. You see what I'm saying? So, right? Y'all know, some of y'all young don't remember that song, but go ahead. Baby face, yeah. yeah. yeah baby face, think about it. Smooth face, no beard, go against the scriptures. That ain't infeminine. That ain't singing a song like that. All in that high octave. But anyway, let's go. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. The husband is the what? Head of the wife. Even as what? As the Messiah is the head of the church. So we got to understand. That's why I said earlier we said all things decently and in order. That's why our households are not in the way that they should be today. And that's why we don't see the unity of our nation. It's a direct link to the family structure. It's a, it's a direct link. People can say what they want. As, as are the parents, so are the children. You know, as the fathers, so are the sons. As the mothers, so are the daughters. That's a, there's no order, all right? But thanks to Heavenly Father that he's bringing us back to this order. All right, come on. And he is the savior of the body. So he is the savior of the body. Vashti didn't want to listen. And even the Eastern cultures, even though they weren't following necessarily um, the exact laws of the Most High, they knew this one. They knew this one, come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. As the church is subject unto Christ. What does it mean to be subject? In all subjection, man, it means you have to follow him. Come on. So let the wives Ooh, be heavy. to their own husbands in everything. I'm not going to do what he tells me to do. I'm not, I'm not listening to him. No, we're going to my church. <laughs> you know, and my pastor said that I'm, I'm not tolerating you not coming to church. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? That's, that's out of order. But it happens. It, it happens. My deacon said, oh, the deacon now is over your husband? The pastor is over your husband? That's not according to the Bible. What Bible y'all read? That's Satan's Bible y'all read. That's not the Bible. The Bible said that everyone be subject to her husband. All right, come on. Husbands, love your wives. Here we go. The husband, this is the perfect order. Husbands, love your wives. Come on. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So that means you got to put some work in. You got to put some time in. You got to be long-suffering. You got to be patient. You see what I'm saying? But obviously, Bashti got on this man's nerve, and he said, look, you got to go. He banned her from Persia. Not, not just the house. <laughs> <laughs> you can't come to Persia no more. He got kicked out of that, their particular kingdom. He was the king. She got kicked out the kingdom of, of that particular time. The Persian king said, you got to go. So the king then established a huge search for a new queen. He started looking for another queen. So Esther was a beautiful young Israelite woman living in Persia with her uncle Mordecai. Mordecai encouraged her to join the other young women at the king's palaces as uh, the prospective queen he told her not to mention that she was an Israelite. And this is how you know that we look like the people of that region. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add one quote too. This was by force. When you read the scriptures closely, mm -hmm. it was by force. The king made them, because he made them like a harem. He would go out and just kidnap women. So basically they was doing the best they could with the situation at hand. Because if you was young and, and you know at that time, they were going to take you. So that was by force. That's right. And this was a result of, again, the curses, where you don't, you don't really have no power, all right? And ultimately, she became queen. Uh, shortly after Esther became queen, 
Mordecai overheard two uh, palace officers conspire to murder the king. So Mordecai, which was her uncle, informed Esther of the conspiracy, and she informed the king. The king, the officers executed uh, and recorded the events in the book of what they call the Annals, or the Annals. Uh, because of the deep hatred for the Jews, Haman tricked the king into signing an executive order. So there was an executive order to get rid of uh, all the Jews in Persia. And he tricked the king to do that. So Haman, we know who he is, the Edomite, and his men then cast uh, the pure, or pur, which is where you get the word purine from, which is dice. Like lots, where they cast lots. So when you, you know, you, we may consider gambling, but they were saying, who, mm -hmm. who we gonna kill, right. you mm -hmm. know? So cast the purr or the dice to decide on the date for the massacre. So these men are planning to kill all the Israelites, man, in Persia. So when Mordecai heard about the plan, remember Mordecai being an Israelite, plan to murder all the Jews in Persia, he put on a public display of mourning. Esther tried to uh, calm him down but he, uh, but he challenged her to report the plan to the king, even though she didn't see uh, him for quite some time. So she had been separated from him for a while, being in the king's, uh, well, Salafi, being in the king's harem. So, you know, again, back then, kings, you know, they, you, you know, they summons you, then you come up, they may not see you for a year. You see what I'm saying? Two years, he just had a harem full of wives, all right? Uh, like Solomon, all right? One evening, King Ahusserus was having a hard time sleeping, so he ordered his servant to read Chronicles of the Kingdom to him. Isn't that something? That he would have the, the peace, even of the scriptures, or would, would bring him peace, King, uh, the kingdom to him. He figured that would put him to sleep. Instead, he was reminded of the time that Mordecai had saved him from the murder attempt. He inquired as to what reward Mordecai had been given and was upset to learn that nothing had been done. He called Haman in to help him prepare a proper reward, but he didn't tell Haman who the reward was for. Haman planned a, a spectacular honor. It goes on to where um, Haman was so arrogant, man, this Edomite, so-called white man, thinking that the honor was for him. He thought the honor was for him, and so he prepared uh, this elaborate honor, thought it was going to be to him, he, um, and actually for himself. And then when the king honored Mordecai, he was very, he was embarrassed. And this is the shame that's going to come on this nation. It's the shame. They're going to be embarrassed. Get that for me. For shame shall cover thee. The shame going to be on them for what they did to us. And they thought it was all about them. They thought that their God was white, so-called white. They thought that their Messiah was so-called white. And they thought it was all about them. The same type of shame that's, that fell on Haman is going to fall on this the, the Edomite nation. You know what I want? Uh, who got it? Where shame shall cover it? When you pause, it's your brother Jay. Uh, yeah. Obadiah. Obadiah, yeah. Obadiah, yeah. I got it. And that, Obadiah is directly, that book is directly talking about Esau. Mm -hmm. That's directly talking about Esau. Come on. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob shame shall cover thee and thou shall be cut off forever forever so you know why they don't tell you about these celebrations in our nation because it talks about their destruction passover is the death of our enemies Kareem is the destruction of our enemies every feast day the sabbath destruction of the egyptians the death of their firstborn you know what I'm saying? So all that, that's why they don't want you to say, hey, brother, Christmas. Do Christmas. That's when we conquered you with right. Christianity. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Do you see how it's reversed? That's what they're doing to us. You know, Thanksgiving. That's when we conquered you. But we want to celebrate Hanukkah. It's when we rededicated the temple. Things like this, all right? And we cast the heathen out. And we cast the heathen out. Mm -hmm. So we cast them out. Mm -hmm. And that's they, they want you alienated from that covenant. All right, is that it on that? All praises. So uh, just a little bit more. All right. So shortly after, again, like we said, she became queen. But we see where, uh, again, Haman was, was very upset. Um, he was embarrassed. So 
one evening, King um, Assurance was having, again, we said that, so again, him being uh, greatly embarrassed, Hammond, and it, he began to construct gallows in order to execute uh, Mordecai. So he wanted to execute Mordecai for this. He was so upset with him. Esther summoned her courage to approach the king about the uh, execution order for all Jews. He was kind and promised her anything she wanted, but she wouldn't tell him what it was. She invited him and Haman to dinner, yet she still didn't tell. She invited them to dinner again. When the king asked her what she desired, she told him of Haman's plot to kill a huge segment of the Persian Empire, including her family. Ahasuerus was furious. He arranged to have Haman executed on the same gallows that Haman had prepared for Mordecai. Now, what does that sound like? As you thought to do to us, mm -hmm. it's going to be done to you. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's get it. As you thought to do to us, as this man had thought to do to us, it's going to be done to him. Right. All right. All praises. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 9 and verse 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Their own trap. They didn't set their own trap when they came up against us. When they came up against the children of Israel, they came up against their own trap. So Haman had prepared for Mordecai and issued a decree that would save the Jews. All right? The book of Esther ends with the establishment of the celebration of Purim, including giving gifts. That's why we have uh, what Elder brought out, all praises, especially food to those in need. Uh, so... Again, let's go to, we're going to skip, so you got the overview. We're going to go straight to the book of Esther, and let's go to uh, chapter 9. Y'all still with me? All right. Now, you're going to find out that we're in the actual day. Today is the day that this was celebrated in the same calendar of the Hebrews, uh, the calendar in which we follow. Now, some follow a different dark moon. It may vary, but we're in the season, in the same season. So bring it out. Read it from the top. This is the book of Esther, chapter 9 and verse 1. Now in the 20th month, that is the month of Dar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew... Let's go, let's go back. Let's read a little slow. Come on. Now, in the 20th month, that is the month of Dar, on the 13th day of the same... Now the 13th day of the same, that's the 12th month. We are in the 12th month. We just had new moon... 14 days ago, 15 days ago, we had new moon. Now, some will have 15 days, depending on how you count it. But we're in that same season. All the Israelite camps have celebrated Purim in this particular season, in this month. So we are in the 12th month. We are in Adar. The word Adar also stands for fire. And if you notice, always in the 12th month represents judgment for the nation. Uh, you notice that with Hanukkah is judgment. In the 12th month, nothing grows. But what does this demon do? He tells us to celebrate the new year in the winter when everything is dead. That's not what we did. We celebrated in the spring. Our new year begins in the harvest time. But the month of Adar is the month of judgment. You see it even with the Most High's judgment in the earth. We see him judging Texas in the month of Adar. And for what Texas did to our people. Know how wicked and racist Texas was. And it's going to be all over the earth. Yeah, I wanted to bring something out. It's funny because I was reading the Torah, Torah portion, and Exodus 21 um, was one of the one of the descriptions. And, it, and the word judgment is mush, mushpat, mush, mush uh -huh. or something. Right, mushpat. And it said right here. Now these are the judgments, which is in Exodus 21, and it just it just had me thinking. I'm reading the Torah portion like this week. Right. And then it goes into it's mushpat, to, and which is judgment. Which is judgment. There you go. Yeah. That's the spirit. You know, the Most High, Psalms 9, 16, is known by his judgment. That's right. He's known by this, and we need to know him that way. Because we've got to stop saying he's good all the time. Stop that. He's great and terrible. All right? We've got to understand that. Bring it up. Now, in the 20th month, that is the month of Dar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near, to be put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, 
though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. Rule over them that hated them. And that's why David said, I hate them with a perfect hatred. And we don't understand that in the scriptures. But when you celebrate these times, when you acknowledge these times, you'll acknowledge that righteous indignation. You see what I'm saying? We we haven't been taught that in the church. We don't, we're not taught righteous indignation. Our people have no idea what righteous indignation is. All right. Come on. I got a precept. Bring it up. This is John chapter 9, verse 39. For judgment, I am coming to the world. For judgment. This is the reason why. You see, remember what did Hamashiach say? He said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. That's not for, it's not for lollipops, man. I'm not, happy birthday, everybody. No, that's, that's not what he's doing. Come on. For judgment I am coming to the world, that they which see might not, or might see, and they which see might be made blind. Might be made blind. I'm sure there's some Christians around here thinking that he gonna come back on December 25th. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. If, on his birthday. Yeah, on Christmas. If he does, it's gonna be judgment. It's gonna be for Hanukkah. You see what I'm saying? Or it's gonna be as relate to Purim, Nicanor, all those things, those judgments. Come on. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> again, Esther 9 and 1. Now in the 20th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in the cities throughout all the province of the king, Ashurus, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt. Stop right there to lay hand. The Most High uses to put our hands on somebody that sought our hurt. Mr. The Most High allowed this to happen. So this is, the again, the righteous indignation. A lot of our people don't think that the Most High gonna use us to do that. Christianity don't teach you that. Give me the book of Isaiah 66. You get it, Brian. Isaiah 66, and we're gonna go to verse uh, 16. Verse we'll start at 15. 15. Yeah, Isaiah 66. We'll start at verse 15 and go to 16. Come, look at Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For behold, the Most High will come with fire. Mm -hmm. Now, note, that's, again, a dar means fire. Similar to fire. That's judgment. Oh, well, praise. <laughs> Dealing with judgment. Come on. Don't and, take my word for y'all. Look this stuff up. Come on. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. And his chariots like a whirlwind. All right? You can say what you want, but that's going to be like Star Wars to the 12th power. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Right. To render his anger <laughs> with fury. To render his what? Anger with fury. His anger, indignation with fury. Come on. And his rebuke with flames of fire. And his rebuke with flames of fire. We always see, remember, the script is prophesied. He's not going to destroy the earth by water anymore, it's going to be with fire. All right. Read on. Verse 16, for by fire and by his sword will the Most High plead with all flesh. He's going to plead with all flesh by what? With what? With fire and by his sword. With fire and his sword. Come on. And the slain of Yahweh shall be many. The slain going to be what? Many. So the Most High going to kill a lot of people. Mm. The slain, that's prophecy. That's going to happen. And look what happened here. Give me, um, I think I want, well, that, that was uh, Isaiah 66, right? Give me Jer Jeremiah 51 and 20. 19. Yeah, let's do 19. Jeremiah 51, 19 and 20. Uh -huh. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them. He's not like the rest of the nations. Come on. For he is the former of all things. We're the former. When we say we did everything, that's what we mean. That's what we mean. It says we're the former of everything. We, we did everything. We came up with everything. There's nothing that this man is that he does not have an original thought. That's right. Why do you think everybody wants to be you? Everybody wants to emulate you. We have the least, but you want to be us the most. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. You can come out with a dance called uh, Mood Gang. 
Man, that's thing you know everybody in this community. And it'll be for years to come. It'll be played out in our community. They still breakdancing in Europe, having breakdance competitions, beatbox competitions in Europe and China. Y'all still beatbox? The hell with me? Like still, just like that, they just were well, able to catch up. That it makes sense. Took them that it took long. them that long to get it. Man, that makes sense. It took them that long to get it. Man, they're still, still doing the walk. Come on. Go ahead. Kind of average bags. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. And Israel is the what? The rod of his inheritance. What do you do with a rod? Come on, it's going to tell you. The most high of hosts is Yo, Yahweh is his name. Verse 20. Thou art my battle axe. My what? Battle axe. So he's saying that we are his battle axe. Come on. And weapons of war. And weapons of war. Let's see what he's going to do with us. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. Oh, God. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. So you see that? He's going to bring it down. They're going to build up. Most high will come down. Plain and simple. And he gonna use us to do it. Come on. Precept. This is Psalms 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains. We're going to bind their kings with chains, man. They're going to come screaming and we're going to drag them. Come on. And their nobles with fetters of iron to, exe to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints praise ye the most high. So this is the honor. We brought that out in camp today. So let's read on. Let's see. This was at this particular time, the day that we're on right now, you know, in this season, this was going on. So according to our calendar, we're at the 15th day uh, of the month of Adar. We're in the 15th day. Or the 14th, for some of you, today is the 14th day. Uh, if today is your 14th day, then tomorrow you can still celebrate this. And we'll see it in the scripture. Some have celebrated uh, the 13th day. Some celebrated Purim, I think it was like yesterday, and then some did the day before yesterday. But we're still all in, in the same time. Come on. Esther chapter 9, verse 2. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the province of the king Asuras, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. So nobody could withstand us. And that's what's going to happen when the Most High puts his spirit on us. We're going to go through this place, and like I said, it's going to be a bloodbath in America, man. It's going to happen. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. We did it. A lot of it, we don't know our heritage. You don't know what stock you come from. All right? We don't. And then uh, verse 3, and all the rulers of the province and the lieutenants and the deputies and officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. You see that? So when the righteous rule, man, the people rejoice. The people that need to be delivered rejoice. That's right. Israel, all throughout the Psalms, it talks about us rejoicing. But you have to know the prophecies uh, to do that. You have to know what's coming. Come on. And his fame went out throughout all the province. For this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. That means the Most High gave him an authority even in the midst of his enemies. What does the scripture say? When your ways please him, he'll make even your enemies be your footstool. And he'll be at peace with you. You see what I'm saying? The king was going around the king's lieutenants. That means Persians were going around working on our behalf, man. Read on. Verse 5. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies. All their enemies. Those who were not at peace with us, man. They wanted our, to see our demise. Come on. With the stroke of the sword. Man, we was a straight killing people, man. The stroke of the sword. Why do you think Yahweh Shai said, man, uh, sell your garment and buy yourself a sword? What do you think it's for? Mm -hmm. killing. It's for killing. Mm -hmm. It ain't for spreading a uh, birthday cake. Uh, Ison, <laughs> come on, man, <laughs> and slaughter and destruction. Like the disciples was a bunch of cooks. <laughs> come on, and destruction 
and did what they would unto those that hated them. Ooh, they did what they wanted to do. They did what they wanted, man. That's going to be beautiful, man. This is all prophecy, but this actually happened. Our people did that. Come on. And in Shushan, the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. 500 men. We talk about Nat Turner, Denmark, Bessie. It's the same spirit, man. It went through. Come on. Har Shadatha mm -hmm. and Dolphin and Aspatha mm -hmm. a, uh, and Poratha and Adalia and mm -hmm. Aradatha mm -hmm. and Zalakia. Are you saying this right? Parmashta mm -hmm. and Arasaya and Aradaya and Vejezatha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. The ten sons of Haman. The ten sons of who? Haman. Uh, give me Isaiah 14, 20 and 21. That's why I can't pronounce it. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> yeah. Ten sons of Haman. If you notice, though, the, the language of Persia and us were very close. Yeah, we were very similar to the Hebrew language. Go ahead. Isaiah 14, uh, 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, mm -hmm. because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. This is what these nations have done. Come on. The seed of evildoers. The seed of evildoers. So even Haman's son had to get it. That's right. Our people don't understand that. They say, well, why are you killing sons? Hey, the son ain't having nothing to do. Why y'all mad at me? I ain't have nothing to do with it. Right. Your wicked father. Right. Your wicked forefathers. Right. So we got to, he didn't have mercy on no children. He didn't have nothing to do with it. Right? right. Um, Keep reading. Read it from the top. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. The seed of evildoers will never be renowned. They're not going to be known. You know why they're not going to be known? Because they're going to be dead. Read. Verse 21. Prepare slaughter. Do what? Prepare slaughter. Prepare slaughter, not a birthday cake. Come on. For his children. For his what? For his children. For his children, man. Come on. For the iniquity of their fathers. For the iniquities of their fathers. And it's going to tell you why to do this. Read on. That they do not rise, nor possess the land. Stop right there because we see the evidence that old devils that have little devils grow up to be big devils. They don't stop. They're like roaches. <laughs> they multiply. They won't stop. They're going to keep doing the same thing. They're... Why are we still dealing with social, racial, economic injustice from the same people? That's why. And the Most High knows better than us. Read on. Nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. We don't want, the Most High don't want them cities again. That's why they can't be in the kingdom, because they're going to do the same thing again. We don't understand that he created them to be the wicked. And he created them to be his sword, to punish us. That's right. But he's going to throw them out. You, like we always say, and like it's been said time and time again, you cannot play with cancer. You can't allow cancer to come back. It's got to be eradicated. It's got to come completely out. Even the white man, though, they try to zap it with heat. Isn't that ironic? They try to zap it cancer with heat and they're going to be destroyed by the fire of the most high right. and that's something come on the ten this is uh esther 9 verse 10 the ten sons of haman the son of hamed hamedatha hamedatha mm -hmm. the enemy of the jews slew they but on the spoil lay they not their hand and in that the prophecy that we're going to leave with substance then we leave Egypt with great substance but we kept the spoil so he killed his sons read on verse 11 on that day the number of those that were slain in Shushan the palace was brought before the king come on and the king said unto Esther the queen the Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan the palace and the ten sons of Haman what have they done in the rest of the king's province now what is it thy petition and it shall be granted thee or what is thy request further and it shall be done? So you see the favor that the Most High even gave Esther? 
An Israelite woman, man. Had the king, had the king messed up. Black. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. She had him messed up. The king was ready to turn his old kingdom upside down. Yeah. All right. That's all I'm going to say on that. Let's go. <laughs> Verse 13, then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree. Let's do the same thing today. Right. Let's do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You remember the movie back then, let's do it again. Yeah, yeah. that's it. She, <laughs> she said, we got to do this again. Yeah. All praises, come on. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. So that, now they already dead. They already did. Let's do it again and let's show the display. Let's display. Because of what they did to us. When you mess with the Israelites, this is what happens. Dead bodies in the hallway. That's what happens. Come on. And the king commanded it so to be done. And the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the 14th day also of the month of dark. So that's where we are. That's where we were yesterday for some of us to celebrate the crescent moon, the dark moon. Some of us would, uh, it would be before that. And for some of us to celebrate uh, the Sabbath again today, Saturday, this is the 14th day, all right, of the month of dark. Uh, for some of us to do the lunar solar, it's the 15th day. But see how we still, we still in it because they did it on these two days. Come on. And slew 300 men at Shushan, but on, but on the prey they laid not their hands. So they did 300, so they, this killing continued on, and it was going on in these other provinces. Come on. Verse 16, but the other Jews that were in the king's province gathered themselves together and stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies. And slew of their foes 70 and 5,000. 70 and 5,000 people. How many people is that? What's 70 and 5? That's 75,000. 75,000, man. Can you imagine? I don't know how many people in Raleigh, but 75,000? Imagine 75,000 Edomites in Raleigh. <laughs> Most High allowed us to go through here for all the things that they've done to us. And then we get to keep the houses. This stuff happens. They don't teach you that in Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Verse 17. Then Haman sent for the Jews that were in Shushan. Verse 18. Then Haman sent for the Jews that were in Shushan. Verse 18. Verse 18. Verse 18. But they laid not their hands on the prey. Read on. This is the great and terrible power that we serve, that our people know nothing about. Come on. On the 13th day of the month of dark, and on the 14th day of the same rested day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. A feast and gladness. You sure can. A feasting and gladness. Seeing that it is a righteous thing to recompense tribulation to them. The trouble. Get that for me, uh, Ron. What's that? 2 uh, Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Second, yeah, Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. So this is a righteous thing. You know it's right because we're celebrating. After we did it, we done slaughtered people, and we get ready to have a feast. We about to enjoy, drink some wine, some yin yin, sit back, talk about it. Did you see that? Even my eyes popped out. I said, brother, you had him. You had him, Captain. You, know, you took that sword and went through him like it was nothing. His heart was still beating. <laughs> That's right. Come on. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Ooh, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. It's written. The judgment written. It's written. The judgment written. We're executing the judgment written. All right. Go ahead, Ron. Captain Stop. Nick, we'll come back to you. Listen to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation, to them that trouble you. That's all that matters, what he says. The most high word matters. I gotta be a nice t-shirt. The most right. high's words matter. That's it, that's all that matters. Not no black life, because we're not black. We're Israelites. Nothing else matters but what the most high, thus saith the most high. Come on. 
Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Love everybody. <laughs> that's, that's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right. Read on. This is uh, Esther chapter 9, verse 17. On the 13th day of the month of Dar, and on the 14th day of the same rested day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews were at Shushan, assembled together on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th thereof, and on the 15th day of the same, they rested, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Verse 19. Therefore the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month of Adar a day of gladness and feasting, and a good day and of sending portions one to another. It was what? Go back to a good day. It was what? A a day of gladness and feasting and a good day. A good day. <laughs> yes, right. That's what I was thinking of. Ice Cube. If today was a good day, after I use my AK, we're going to change, we change the lyrics a little bit. Because he said he didn't have to. But after... After I used my AK, it was a good day. And of sending portions to one another, we gave gifts to each other behind this. God, God. We're not taught about this. We're not taught about this. Come on, read on. And of sending portions one to another. Read on. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the province of the king Ashuras, both nigh and far. Read on. To establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month of dog and the 15th day of the same year. Year. So again, some of us in the 15th, some of us in the 14th, but we should keep this yearly. Come on. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies. From their what? From their enemies. So we got enemies. The Most High got enemies, and he's going to give us rest from our enemies. And that's salvation. That's deliverance from your enemies. Come on. And the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy. And beloved, I want you to think about where we are in this time. This is very powerful because this life and what we've experienced are rough ways, man. But the most high is about to smooth them out. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to get uh, the sorrow that we had is going to go from mourning to, to rejoicing to joy. You know, we're going to go from sorrow to sorrows that we had to experience in this life. You know, where it says it's going to be no more pain, no more suffering. But the pain that we, we don't associate with is being inflicted upon us by our enemy. You know, you got a lot of our people ready to die. Just, I just want to get out of here. And I just want to be in a place with little white girls and little white boys and black boys and girls can get along like the damn boys club. That's not going to happen. And that's not the rest that the Most High is trying to get. We got to see the salvation of the Most High. We have, when we say we look to the hills from which cometh our help, our help coming from the Most High, you got to really know what that help is too and what it's associated with. It's the deliverance of your enemies. It's the death and destruction of those who persecuted you and hated you for all this time. And if you're not ready for that, you ain't ready for the kingdom. That's right. Come on. And the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day, mm. that they should make them days of feasting and joy and sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. Read on. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun and as Mordecai had written unto them, because Haman, the son of Hamedatha, the Agat, or or Agagite, Agagite, the enemy of the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them and had cast her, that is the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Wherefore, they called these days Purim, after the name of Pur. Therefore, all the words of this letter and of that which they had seen coming this matter and which had come unto them. You know, it's always said, it's, when we serve the Most High, it's warning before destruction. We would hope to have this favor in our life because we're surrounded amongst our enemies. 
you would need this. You would need this warning before destruction. And we were warned. The Most High is still using his service today to warn us, to obey his commandments, obey his statutes. You know, choose this day whom you serve so that you'll be spared from the destruction that he's going to bring upon your enemies. Come on. 27. The Jews ordained and took, took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing. And according to their appointed time, every year. So every year. So we need to remember this, and uh, going forward, we'll get gifts from one another, and we we'll just we'll do things uh, according to what was decreed by Mordecai. Come on. Verse twenty-eight. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation. You gotta teach your children that. We don't teach them that. Talk about the day. Easter Bunny gonna hop in here. The Tooth Fairy. All these things, man, have nothing to do with reality. Nothing to do with solid reality and giving them a foundation so that they can walk with their heads held high and not looking down like this and being scared and moving out the way. But I wish a little old white lady would try to get in front of me at the door. Man, I ain't open no door for her. After all she did, she better, you better get back. Damn, I'm in line first. No, come on. Holding the door for Miss Ann, driving Miss Daisy. Drive out the west. Now drive over Miss Daisy. <laughs> and that these days. Pushing Daisy. <laughs> Pushing Miss Daisy. Go ahead. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation. Right. Every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews. I know y'all say, well, what, what is y'all gonna talk? That man seemed crazy. Look, they didn't spare young or old, man. All right. They didn't spare young or old. Whip an old man to death. Work him to death. Picnics. What you say, boy? What you say? Who you who you eyeballing, boy? Man, 80 years old, string him up on the tree. You know who that happened. Come on. Nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. That's right. Verse 29. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihail, and Mordecai the Jew wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. And he sent the letters unto all Jews to the 120 and seven provinces of the kingdom of Asuras with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim and their times appointed according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them. Isn't this wonderful that our heritage is being restored to us and that now we can identify with these scriptures and saying they know who my people. We, we didn't just come over here and just work scratching in the fields and that's all we did we didn't contribute to nothing no, this is our rich heritage and culture right. talking about we're a bunch of africans we just came over here blowing dark blowing right. stuff like that come on man yeah. what's funny is like like Purim is every every like february right so it's black history month right so-called black history month. right and then we i can say from here on out i'm reading that's right. And it's accounting history. That's right. That that culture we need to, and this is why I was saying that we're to make sure that our seed will remember this. Mm -hmm. That's why I even keeping the Passover for people say you don't have to do that. Man, you just cut yourself off from your heritage. Right. right. You you just forsook your ancestors and all their struggle and what we went through, and more importantly, the covenant that your Creator made with you. Mm -hmm. Man, come on. And as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed, the matters of the fasting and their cry. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. In the book. And so we see it was in the book what? We just read it. So all praises, man. Give me the book. I'm almost finished. Give me the book, Psalm 7, I want uh, 16, and we're going to read down to 26. Come on. Yeah, he's um the priest is absolutely correct in what he was saying as far as um our history. Um this is something that they don't show you, you know. Um I like writing about unmentioned history. And this whole chapter right here is unmentioned history about our people. And one of the main reasons why Esau don't go into, you know, um, you know, black men uh, by the name of John uh Standard made the refrigerator, you know, and GPS system was made by a black woman, Marvin West, is because it, it keeps them financially wealthy. If, if Negroes came back and know that they can make a car 
like Mr. Greenfield did, JT Greenfield did, you know what that'll do? That'll make Negroes start making cars again. Okay, now Esau financially, he's going into debt now because listen, that's the reason why you send your kids to school, tell you to, you know, go to school. So why? So you can depend on the society, man. All right, go to school and learn. You know, you're going to school to be an engineer and you come out now, now you're even, what, $100,000 in debt now. Now you're in a credit debt society. Okay, but we're the natural genius engineers anyway. Benjamin Banneker, guys like that, that's naturally, we got that natural gene chip in us, that genius chip in us, man. All right, and Esau knows it because, listen, because it's like he was saying, no, listen, when you read the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, Daniel said, when it came to Esau and the Romans and the Greeks, he said he, he, he hasn't seen no, he hasn't seen nothing like this before. You're not supposed to impoverish and have your own people in poverty, man. All the, you mean to tell me all the gold Esau stole, man? You mean to tell me he can't divide that up against the, for his own people, man? Okay, all the other nations never had their people in poverty, man. Esau got their own. That's the reason why you have Edom like somebody, well, that wasn't me. And on the side of the damn road, talk, with their leg blown off, talking about, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Can you help me? That's not supposed to happen, man. All right? That's not supposed to happen. That goes to show you the greediness of this man. And this man, he's not a normal man. That's the reason why the Most High saved him for last. To show you who the devil is, man. That's right. All praises. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms 7 and 16. His mischief shall return upon his own head. So we see what happened to Haman. And we see what this devil going to do. His mischief. This man is mischievous. Just like what Elvin was bringing out. He's very mischievous, man. His intentions are not well. And they never have been. Right. Trying to give people a vaccine. And they talk about... Uh, we care about you all of a sudden, so come take this vaccine. I really trust the damn dragon. <laughs> and dragon that wanted to do a cookout with me. I, I would rather trust a real live dragon that breathed fire and say he want to have a cookout <laughs> than take and trust this man with a vaccine. He ain't never done nothing right. Come on. I mean, lions know, uh, gazelles know that lions eat gazelles. When gazelles see a lion, they say, oh, time to go. <laughs> Our people say, oh, let's love him. Let's love him, Mr. Lion. <laughs> <laughs> and his violent dealing. His what? His violent dealing. This man is dealt violently with us, man. This man is dealt very violently, man. He's still dealing violently. We just seen some, a cop had a little boy in the head, like a little uh, young so-called black man in the head headlock. Where was that at? In Baton Rouge. Had him down in the choker. The, 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 little, the little man couldn't have been, man. Four feet. So he looked so small and scrawny. Right there, right there. Look at that, man. You got a little boy in That's a child. And look who's sitting around watching. Right. No mic in their hands. Hey, priest. That's violent. And then it's like in the headline, it said allegedly had the little boy. Like, we watching it now, you got him in the headlock, but it said allegedly had him in the headlock. Come on, man. <laughs> Violently, man. It, it don't take all that. It don't take all that. Psalms 9 16. His mischief shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his own plate. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. I will praise the Most High according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's, it. That's it. So this is what we got to do. I'm, I'm going to read this and then you go ahead. Haggai 2.22. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the heathen and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and the riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, I will take thee. And we know Ozerubel, my servant, the son of Shetiel, saith Yahweh, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee and Yahweh of hosts. So the Most High is getting ready to do what he did before. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna get one more, and then I'm gonna close. Oh, you can receive. I had a precept to go. had a precept to go with that song, with the, the mischief thing. This is uh, Second Maccabees chapter seven and verse thirty-one. Bring it out. It says, "And thou that has been the author of all mischief against mm. the Hebrews shall right. not escape the hands of God." You're not good. That's powerful. You shall not escape. Give me the chapter verse again. Mm. Second Maccabees chapter seven and verse thirty-one. Read it again. And thou 
that has been the author of all mischief yeah. against the Hebrews That's him. shall not escape the hands of God. He's not going to escape. He's not going to escape. So how you going to give him a pass? Right, right, right. How you giving him a pass, Mr. Christian? Right. How you giving him a pass? Mm -hmm. It just don't make no sense. Go ahead. Isaiah 1 and 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. The faithful city. But how are we going to become a faithful city? Read on. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. With judgment. Zion is synonymous with the land and the people. Israel. Zion. And even we know that Zion is, means what? What is Zion? It's a weapon. It's a weapon. All right? That goes back to us being this battle axe. That's right. All right? Come on. Shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. Read on. And the destruction of the transgressor and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Most High shall be consumed. Who shall be consumed. So we know that's all the heathens ever done mm -hmm. is forsook the Most High. That's all he's ever done in the so-called white. Y'all, somebody in here show me one time when he obeyed the Most High as a nation. Show me when he did what the book said to do. You won't find it. You will not find it. Is it the Pope? You won't find it. And so with that, I yield, I say Shalom. Uh, Asher Parim. Happy Parim to everybody. All three. Let's celebrate. Give some good things to give. We're going to eat. We're going to eat the fat, drink the sweet. All praises. Go ahead.